Good evening, everyone. I welcome you to the uh, meeting of uh, Community Board 2 uh, Transportation and Public Safety Committee. Uh, the meeting is being recorded. I don't know if anybody's asked for accommod a accommodation or for translation, um, but I don't think that we've received any. Uh, so I welcome you to the meeting. I, I do want to point out uh, one thing in, in welcoming people is that the uh, a chat that's on the side is not recorded and any comments that are made there are not actually part of the meeting. Uh, what, what we've done, what this committee has done traditionally is that uh, uh, where we get to the open session for public comments, that's only for non-committee members uh that we also generally allow during presentations for questions from the uh, uh, uh public as well as the committee members as long as it doesn't get to be too extensive or too off subject uh the open session for public comment which is item six is only for the items that are listed on the agenda and it's only for comments from uh non-committee members later on there is the community forum at the community forum, anybody who wishes to make any statement, uh, any non-committee members to make any any uh, uh, statement can do so. Those are limited uh, to uh, a couple of minutes. I generally don't let it go up to three as long as it's not too extensive. Uh, we're happy to hear comments uh, from both the public. If committee members want to bring up uh, things new that are not on, I that will be under uh, other committee business or under new business. Uh, that's where the appropriate time for those things are. So, so with that, uh, uh, John, can you call the uh, uh, roll, please, and people can can introduce themselves as well. Thanks, Sid. Uh, Sid Meyer, Chair. Present. Esther Blount, Vice Chair. Yeah. John Craig Secretary here. Ernest Augustus. Sandy Balboza. You're on mute, Sandy. Here. Thank you. Uh, Juliet Cullen Chung. Here. John Dew. Cheryl Gelbs. Kate Gilman. Here. Brian Howell. Here. Patrick Kalaki. Here. Nicole Murray. Here. Jonathan Rogers. Cyril Scala. Here. We have a quorum. Can I get a motion to uh, adopt uh, the ad agenda, please? So moved. Seconded. Any opposition? The uh, agenda is adopted. Uh, I don't know if, if people had an opportunity to uh, review the previous minutes from, from August because we did not have a meeting in September. Any comments on the meetings from August? Hearing none, you always can put them into the office if there are. <clears throat> Hearing none. Uh, Nicole, uh, I'll turn the meeting over to Nicole to discuss the uh, traffic violence and the district level crash statistics. Yes, sir. One second. Oops. Okay. Uh, can you see the screen? Yes. I'm gonna answer this phone. I'm gonna go away for a second. Okay. Uh, so for new folks, um, this is from Crash Mapper, which takes in um, police reports of crashes and that were listed for um, community boards. Um, so this is official police reports and it is a uh, tablet tab table of crashes and I just go over crashes with injuries and this is for our community board district. I did kind of figure out uh, last week that sometimes some crashes are put into neighboring community boards if they're like on a street that's sort of halfway. So there may be some things that like, you know, mix, but it's, it's probably pretty close. I just wanted to call that out. So I do it for the month before because that's when all the data comes in. Um, so this is for September. You can see a map here. So um, based on previous 
months. Um, if we did better than August, <laughs> August had 85 crashes with injuries. And this month we had 62 in the district. The same areas as always near the bridges, Tillery, J Street and so on, Flatbush, Atlantic, of course. Um, so they all typically kind of cluster around the um, same areas. We had no fatalities, thankfully. Um, we did have um, 18 cyclists injured, 14 pedestrians injured, and 48 motorists injured. It is usually the case that um, motorists, which is this dark red line here, I'm sorry, that's total, it's the um, orange line, motorists typically are the most um, impacted by traffic crashes and traffic accidents. Um, and then pedestrians, cyclists, uh, well, cyclists actually are ticking up, but cyclists and pedestrians tend to get at the same, same rate. Um, so, you know, I think it's important to understand that traffic crashes affect motorists the most um, often, uh, but of course, uh, pedestrians and cyclists are very much um, in danger as well. So this is a six month chart. Um, and then in our year chart, um, I think pretty typical um, starting from October, you typically see a dip uh, in winter um, and then it goes back up, uh, but you know, not, not great for the community board. Um, for the year, we've had uh, 831 total injuries and fatalities. It looks like only one fatality so far, so that's good, but lots and lots of injuries. Ms. Murray, I wanted to thank you for bringing uh, the incident at PS20 to the yes. district office's attention today. Do you have any more information to share about that? I do not. So this morning, for folks who don't know, there was um, a an SUV um, that came south down Adelphi uh, at a high speed and made an uncontrolled turn onto Willoughby on, into PS20. And it went over the sidewalk and hit the fence uh, and the driver, and I believe there might've been a passenger or two fled. This is according to witnesses and a pol police uh, officer from the 88th. Um, I don't have any more information um, from that. Um, and that would not be uh, noted in this, this data because it's from uh, this month, this is last month. Um, but there were no injuries, thankfully, um, but that corner is particularly busy in the mornings and afternoons with school children, Willoughby. Uh, so it came onto Willoughby, right? And that is an open street. And in the morning, it just gets packed with kids and parents. So just luckily it happened, um, you know, in the, in the afternoon. So nobody, nobody was hurt, but you know, if it were earlier than it could have been a lot of injuries, it drove straight over one of those flex posts, those post posts are in the road. They just, they just bend. Um, so just thanks to timing, nobody got hurt, but that could have been a lot, a lot worse. Um, don't know if it was a stolen car or a drunk driver or what, but the driver fled. So, do you know where the fatality was uh, in the district uh, last year? Um, let me see if I can find it here. It was one on Atlantic Avenue. Yeah, there oh. was one on Atlantic. I don't think that was counted for this community board, even though it actually was. But like again, sometimes they they misplace the um the um person. So here, right here. Oh, this is Appleton, I think still. Maybe Appleine. This is of uh, this is that park, I believe. Yeah. Um, this is where Appleine's garden would be. Is that correct? Vanderbilt. Yes. Yes. It was. That's a, that's a, that's a child. It was. That's a child yes. who was killed. Yes. Okay. This is for the whole year, so it's from last year. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, and then that that um, person on Atlantic, uh, which for some reason is not in this, maybe was put to another community board, it happened like right on Atlantic Avenue. It was an elderly person hit by a truck. Oh, I think there was one on, at Smith in Atlantic, a, a biker and a tractor trailer or something. I asked about it a couple of times. Oh, let's see. That one was actually not in our district, but yes. Yeah, that's not coming up. It must have been a neighboring district. I've also asked the DOT to report on the uh, uh, what uh, the changes on the BQE uh, has caused in the in changes in accidents from from year to year, from before and after. And they said they'd get back to us. See some hands raised. The chair want to call on the hands. I don't see the hand, but uh, whose hand is raised? Zero and Esther. Uh, uh, Esther, why don't you go first? The reports that you've given us are from, because the baby died in 2021. Yep, this is, so, this is right here is for this, a year. Excuse me? This, this particular view is from a year, calendar year. So the calendar year, the, 
Unfortunately, a baby died in September of 2021. Mm -hmm. so it's, I, I still want you, can you explain how you're doing it? So it goes from, okay, yeah. So actually, the baby died October, September yeah. 11th to, okay. So she should not be counted in this report. Okay, so something may have gotten missed. I'll take a look, okay. but that's been the only one in, in at least a year, maybe a year and a month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's one. Of, that's one of my concerns. I mean, that's one of what's always been an issue. Is is especially since people anecdotally have other reports of deaths that that don't appear, and it always troubles me. Oh, this says March. Oh, you know what? I think I manually put in the guy that got hit by a truck because it should have been our community board, but it wasn't labeled as such. So that's the truck guy that happened in March here. Okay, thank you. Any other, uh, Asiro, you have a question? Yeah, I had a general question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, these hotspots that Nicole pointed out, are they gathered uh, and given to the DOT and asked for some mitigation or is there anything going being done on those major hotspots that come up all the time? where they gathered and maybe looked at and maybe they can come back to us and tell us if there's some corrections or things that they are doing. Is that a question for the chair? I, I don't I guess you know, the both. You, you know, I don't, you I don't know. Know. DOT monitors these and uh, 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 that uh, uh, if we, we also should try to figure out some way of asking them about particular hotspots, what the what what they're doing, if anything. Right. It, yeah. There was someone. Um, it was the woman who said, "I forget what the presentation was about, but I, I brought this up, and she said that they she said that they have you know the same data and and they look at it, but I I think maybe it were, further work would require an action taken of some kind um, about a specific intersection. I don't think they're going to necessarily be proactive." unless we bring a specific intersection up is my well, guess. You know, obviously we're looking at this. We shouldn't just be looking at it and not doing something about it. You know, the, the, mm -hmm. the fact is, is that if we, if, if there are a hot spots, obviously you see, you see my concern here about uh, the BQE at Atlantic Avenue. That's, that's probably one of the hotter spots in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. It's been the scene of fatalities over the years, uh, 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 some in the district and us immediately south of the district. And obviously it, we, we should be looking at this in some way that if we, we should think about, not necessarily today, that uh, uh, we, 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 should, we, should, we, we should consider some way of monitoring this, that when we're, we're looking at it, when we see hot spots, that we ask DOT if they're doing anything. I think that would be terrific. That, uh, I mean, Nicole is doing a fine job in, in uh, gathering it. Maybe to get it, get some rec recognition from the DOT would be would be some help to mitigate it. Really, to get something done. Okay. Yeah, that was sort of my intention of um, you know doing this project. Was you know, can we use this data to make take actions? We should. Mm -hmm. We have to figure out a way of doing that. All right. Uh, is, there, is there somebody from the general public who would like to ask a question? So there's still Sandy, Kate, and uh, and some other hands that are still up. John, I think. Who's hands are? I, you know, I, uh, I, I can't see hands, unfortunately. I see Kate and Sandy. Sandy, Sandy Bill Bosa, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Sa uh, Sandy, go ahead. Okay. So um, I see, I, I don't want to open it and make it bigger because I think I'll lose everything on my iPad here, but it looks like uh, uh, Sid said, you know, uh, where the BQE is. And I think another problem is, is Borum or is that Smith? But, um, uh, you know, we're getting more traffic from the BQE. And um, uh, the other night we had a, a workshop meeting and, um, you know, there are going to be three weekends where the cantilever is closed and all that. So um, I think if we have hot spots, we need some enforcement um, to help direct the traffic. Uh, it's sort of lawless out there. People yeah. 
go through the red lights. Um, it, all kinds of stuff goes on. It's it's scary, and the um, you know the the people that uh, ride on the sidewalk with the um, electric bikes and mopeds, which are more like uh, more and more like uh, motorcycles, um, they go through the red lights when pedestrians are crossing at the intersections. I don't know if, if there are any accidents from that being reported, but um, it just, it's just, uh, I think some enforcement for hot spots. maybe we could recommend that, or I don't think people look at the lights. We asked for some, uh, we meaning uh, the bid, the Atlantic Avenue bid asked for some sp uh, red light cameras at Smith and Atlantic and Hoyt and Atlantic because that's where they really try to beat the light all the time, um, e even when you know pedestrians are starting to cross. So red light cameras and enforcement is what I, I'm suggesting. Uh, Kate, you have something to add? Hey all, yes. Um, I was just gonna say quickly, Nicole, I remember from that DOT meeting, them bringing up that they're kind of sitting looking with the same data and know as much as we know. So I can definitely confirm that with you. I, um, I think this sounds like exactly the right next step. And I remember us talking about this last year that there was a mix of wanting to follow the data and then other people bringing up wanting to have some kind of vehicle for community feedback. Um, the people on the street understand what corners are particularly dangerous. But I think whatever steps this committee figures out are right, that it's our job to advocate uh, based on the same data to DOT and Vision Zero and just say whether it's five spots or 10, this, these are the needs um, you know, in CB2 and we want to hear direct solutions and invite them into a meeting to talk to us about that once they receive it. So I, I feel like um, Nicole's doing such an awesome job with this and turning it into some kind of recommendation like Sandy's saying or a request for mitigation like Ciro is saying, um, but being really specific um, based on you know, what we see are pretty clear data slash community feedback um, points on the, on the map. Okay, so why don't, why don't we do this? I mean, uh, Nicole, uh, I don't know if, how we would do this, that we would have to uh, pick a period of time and, and ask DOT and PD to uh, look at the places we see as hotspots. Is that something you could you could uh, give a, a specific report so that we could turn it over to the uh, uh, DOT and, P and PD? I think so. Um, I might need some assistance from Taya or somebody, but um, yeah, I believe so. Uh, there's two, I think Brian also has his hand up before I speak more on that. Okay. So I mean, yeah, yeah. I have I, two more. I have Brian and Denise, and then we're going to move on. So, Brian. Yeah, I, I put in the chat the uh, 2019 um, Vision Zero Safety Action Plan um, as an entire, you know, discussion on each of the boroughs. It shows all of the Vision Zero priority corridors. I mentioned them in the chat. We also have what appear to be. Uh, six or seven Vision Zero priority intersections. Um, we also have substantial part of the district is in the Vision Zero priority area. So these are already things that you know DOT is aware of and is mapping out and it's included in this report um, and has already assessed certain streets, intersections and areas um, uh, to receive priority. I'm, I'm not really sure what we are saying we can add here um, that they aren't already sort of mapping out for us and, and telling us based on track uh, crash data. Yeah, but but I would like to get a specific get a specific report. Denise, you have to unmute yourself. Me. There you go. Okay. Hi, my name's Denise. I live right here on Skimmerhorn and Bond. I don't know if your committee or the community board takes a walk around here, but it's horrible. Now I'm a driver, but I'm a safe driver per se. But I'm wondering what can we do about these bikers? Because throughout this whole area, decalb, even while walking, decalb, skimmerhorn, barn, everywhere around here, they do not um, pay attention to the traffic laws. 
And I, I see that everybody wants this climate control thing, this vision zero, this whole thing. And you've changed the blocks, but nobody is dealing with the bikers and the people on these motorcycles. Denise, thank you for, you know, this is a continuing issue that, that, that uh, uh, we have been discussing here for years, literally. Uh, Sandy Balboza brings it up all the time. Uh, we have discussed it with the police. We have discussed it with DOT. DOT says it's a police problem. Uh, we, we think it's a combination of, of both education and enforcement that needs to be done. Uh, uh, so so we, we agree with you. Uh, it's something that we've brought up the, periodically and we've raised issues and we will continue to do so. I think that we should start charging the bikers to share the road too. Car drivers have to pay to use Denise, our cars. Denise, Denise, we Denise, should start Denise, considering charging the bikers. Denise, Denise I, 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 we can, you can raise these issues. There's an appropriate time to raise the issues, and you're now changing the subject away from accidents. No, it's it's transportation. Denise, Denise, this is my first time here, and I understand. I, I, I appreciate it. Denise. I want I mean, to. We're going on to Denise, my pleasure. Denise. We're going on to the next person, John Do. Yes, um, Sid, having been on this community board for well over two decades, there was a long period of time where DOT had one of the representatives visit the Transportation and Public Safety Committee every month. So we didn't have to go in circles and circles talking about whether DOT did or did not get the information. We need to request that DOT resume having a staff person, and it used to be the person who was assigned to this district. John, attend. I'm going to cut you off and tell you to bring it up during new business. That's the appropriate time. Well, you, you John, have the person. I'm cutting you, you off and tell you to bring it up during new business. Did I complain, Thank Sid? You. Go ahead. Go Thank ahead. You. Next on the agenda is the open session for, uh, for public comment on adopted agenda items. The two adopted agenda items tonight are, are the Dumbo trolley and the Skirmahorn and Bond. And Gia, I think, is the one person who asked to speak first. And then Alex. Go ahead, Gia. You can go for a couple of minutes. Yes, thank you. This is my first time um, on this meeting as well. I am a resident that lives at 200 Skimmelhorn Street. I am a disabled resident that lives at 200 Skimmerhorn Street. There is no place for the accessoride vehicle to yield, park, and pick me up. There is no place for the school bus to stop to pick the, the kids up. Even if there was a place, we would have to pass the double lane bike lane to try to get out into the middle of the street to pick up our car. When there's no place for our cars to stop to pick us up, they have to go around the block. They have to go all the way to Nevins to go around the block and it takes about 20 minutes. So I'm very, very concerned that one of our elderly, a handicapped person like myself or a school age kid trying to cross the bike lane to get to their vehicle is going to be hurt. Thank you for listening to me. You're welcome. And the next person whose name I called out, but for some reason I forgot. Uh, Alex, go ahead, Alex. Alex, you you're on mute. Are you unmuted? Alex, are you? Who's Mr. Craigie? That's me. Okay. Go ahead. Um, I wanted to um, ask if there were any plans or if there, I, and I know I think this is the agenda item to change one of the directions of the streets uh, off Shimmerhorn because uh, it since it's become one way, uh, 
it's it took us 10 minutes just to leave the house the other day i i live at 211 and we drove out of the garage and we were stuck in traffic we could not leave the street for about even 10 minutes just to get off the block um so i uh, was wondering if it would be possible to consider changing one of the directions of the streets to be able to get off of uh off of shimahorn more easily because the traffic throughout the day is consistently extremely heavy thank you that's actually on the agenda tonight samantha Hi, everyone. Apologies if you hear uh, cartoons in the background. My daughter is watching. Um, <laughs> but I felt compelled to join this during her bedtime just to talk about um, the trolley idea in Dumbo. I've been a, a seven year resident planning to stay for as long as possible. The quality of life in the area, just given all the congestion, construction, uh, infrastructure changes has been pretty rough. And as a long time resident and someone who intends to stay here for a really long time, I wanted to just express that I am not a, in favor of the trolley. I think it would cause additional congestion. Dumbo's three or four blocks long. I don't see how, from an economic perspective, it would be a good use of resources and just wanted to express um, my opinion. So I appreciate you having me here. Thank you, Thank you uh, Samantha. Uh, Andrew? Uh, yeah, I want to support the change of Bond Street as well from south to north. I uh, agree with everything what, uh, I guess, the person two ago said about the traffic being horrendous on Summerhorn. And it's it's led to, you know, kind of the opposite result. Like, you see police cars, you see cars drive down the bike lane, which is unsafe for everyone uh, when it gets that bad. Uh, so there's a lack of enforcement as well. Uh in the traffic pattern that they're trying to set up here. But I think, you know, changing uh, Bond Street would help with the alleviate that and also give another way to get uh, back to the bridges, which I think is a lot of where the traffic's going. Okay, thank you. Robert G. Yes, hello, thank you. Um, similar to Samantha, I actually came tonight to um, you know, while I, I respect the enthusiasm of the trolley project as a resident, um, we've been having so many issues with, we're, we're just really under an onslaught um, of tourism and road construction. And we're already years into this capital improvements project with relaying the streets. And so again, while I appreciate and respect the enthusiasm around a project like this, um, I, I think that it's too late in the game for it. It's expensive, um, potentially dangerous. People aren't used to trolleys. Um, the Brooklyn Dodgers that are mentioned on the page, actually, we, there were several hundred deaths, um, I believe, or at least over a hundred in the first several years of having trolleys in the late 1800s. Um, and so a silent trolley would probably create a lot of injuries in the initial years as well. Um, so between the cost, the traffic problems and the potential safety consequences, um, I would ask you to, um, take that into account as a resident of community board two to, um, not support that proposal. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Alexandra G. Yes. Hi, Sid. Sorry, my mic was off. Uh, so yeah, we, we, we started the uh, the petition of, of local residents. No, no, no. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, are you uh, on the presentation? You, are you on the presentation? No. Uh, wh what do you mean? No, uh, Mr. Meyer, he's, uh, he's a resident. Okay, I'm go ahead. Resident. I called someone else, but go ahead. Uh, so yes, uh, I'm, you know, we, we started the petition regarding the Bond Street issue. I mean, the, the Skimmerhorn change, I think, has taken a lot of local residents by surprise, even though it seems like the DOT had uh, communicated about it. The, the, the traffic implication has been uh, really, really dramatic in the neighborhood. Uh, I don't think the DOT had realized that there were no streets going north from Skimmerhorn once you passed Hoy Street. Uh, in addition to some street closures on Hoyt Street, the, the, the traffic conditions in the area have become really, really tough. Uh, we obviously realize that the DOT will not change Skimmerhorn back to uh, a two-way street, but we feel this is where we made the, the suggestion of, of changing the direction of traffic on Bond Street between Skimmerhorn and Livingston so that we could make a left on Bond Street. And as, as someone mentioned before, be able to get back into Livingston. I mean, it would definitely, I think, improve the, the traffic conditions in the area. Uh, because right now, when you're stuck on Skimmerhorn, 
you know, your guess is as good as mine and how long it's going to take you to get out of that street. So um, thank you for your support on this. Hi, uh, Alexandra G. Hey, I am. Um, I also live on Skimohorn Street and it's a, the change, the traffic pattern has definitely caught me by surprise. I actually have a new baby. So at this point, I'm, I have anxiety to go outside because I don't know if it's going to take me five minutes to get out of my garage or 25 minutes. Well, recently, nine out of 10 times, it's taken me about 25 minutes to go about three and a half blocks, which is a huge change. Um, never mind the fact that I'm forced to go left when I always go right to just to head down Hoyt Street. So if there's anything we can do to alleviate that, that would be amazing. Okay, thank you, Deborah. Deborah? Sorry, yes, I'm here. I had to unmute. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, and I, I don't know what, oh, I turned my camera around. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm here to speak about the, I live in Dumbo. I've been here for about 10 years. And as the other people have already spoken, um, I want, I'm, I'm here to speak against the trolley project. I think, you know, you can walk from one end of Dumbo to the other in 10 minutes. I do it every day. I think the trolley is just an, I actually think it's, it's rather absurd. And it just, is it, it to me it feels like making turning the neighborhood into more and more and more and more of a theme park that it already is um we're just as people have said we're inundated with people you know taking pictures by the bridge and congress I, I just don't see that that doing another tourist attraction that's going to cause disruption for the residents you know is of any value at all and somebody pointed out well the tracks are here they're historic but there are plenty of things around that are historic that we don't use anymore um you know we don't use the piers to unload freight i mean it's just um if that's not a it's just not it doesn't belong in this neighborhood okay thank you aisha i am a resident on state street between hoyt and smith and uh, like many others on this second matter of the uh, changes to Skrimmelhorn traffic have found, it's taking a very, very long time to get back to our home once we collect our car, which is uh, right behind us in the Edison Park Fest uh, surface lot. So I'm very supportive of Alex's suggestion that um, the stretch of bond uh, between Livingston and Skrimmelhorn be um, enabled for uh, northerly traffic because um, that'll help us not have to stay on Scrimmelhorn forever. And then also we come back on Atlantic. So that's, we're basically putting a lot of our own vehicular traffic on roads that are already super congested. Um, and I think that could be improved um, with this modification that he suggested. So I'm just here to say I'm supportive of that change. Thank you, Ayesha. Darren? Hi, um, I'm here to speak about uh, about the Bond Street reversal. I'm a resident of State Street between Hoyt and Bond. I'm a driver and a cyclist. Uh, today, there was so much noise on the street because people were honking constantly because the block is so congested. And I try not to drive to create more congestion, but it just creates more congestion to drive more blocks to get out of this neighborhood. This occurs all the way down to the construction at Flatbush and State. As a cyclist, as a cyclist coming from, oh, I go to Fort Greene sometimes, I don't think, I don't think there would be any, uh, any negative effects by having to go across Livingston for a block and, you know, to transit, to go over to Brooklyn Heights or Cobble Hill, or even to this neighborhood. So I uh, appreciate your consideration in this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Darren. Bill, well, that's, that'll be the last person uh, for the open <clears throat> session. Mr. Meyer, there, there's a person named Jimmy on the call who is not able to raise his hand, but would like to comment. Okay, so I'll do Billy and Jimmy. Bill and Jimmy, excuse me. Bill, go ahead. Hi, um, I live in Fulton Ferry on Old Fulton Street, which is part of the uh, proposed Dumbo trolley route. Um, I think the Dumbo trolley proposal is um, impractical. And um, as mentioned by Deborah, it's, it's sh such a short route. Um, we're not San Francisco, we don't have hills. People can walk from one part of Dumbo to the other quite nicely right now. Um, it also duplicates part of the B25 bus route. Um, that also makes it um, uh, you know, imp impractical or subject to um, even more congestion. And um, I think that if it was extended to Borough Hall, 
and the B-25 bus was um, terminated there and acted as a, um, as a shuttle from Borough Hall to Dumbo, then um, possibly I could support it. Or if it extended down Furman Street to Atlantic and connected the north and south ends of the park, which would not just benefit tourists, which this proposal right now is only really geared to us towards tourists. If it was, if it went down Furman Street, it would benefit tourists and residents alike. Thanks. Thank you, Jimmy. Hi, everyone. I'll be quick. Um, thank you for letting me speak. This is my first time here. I live in Dumbo, been here almost 10 years. Um, I love this neighborhood deeply, and I feel very, very um, lucky to live in such a popular place that people want to come to. But if, if you if folks take a look and walk around on maybe a Saturday or even a Friday during the day, you'll see how much of a zoo it is here. And I think that in terms of like adding more things that can be squeezed into this very small neighborhood, um, I think public safety, for example, ambulances and fire trucks and police officers, they can't get down the street in maybe less than 10 minutes. And that's that's faster than anyone can walk, crawl. So I appreciate the enthusiasm of the trolley idea, but I, 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 I feel very strongly that not adding one more thing to make it um, even more intolerable on the long list of things that have to, in my opinion, happen, take priority first. Okay, so, thank you uh, all. Oh, thank so, I'm you. sorry, thank go ahead, you. Jimmy. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, no, thank and, you. Uh, and let's get, now we go to the presentation on the Dumbo trolley. <laughs> Adrian, did we scare you away? Are you still here? Uh, I'm still here. <laughs> Just okay. about to share my screen. Yeah. Here we go. Well, welcome, Adrian. And I, I've, I've, I've been to the uh, Shoreline Trolley Museum, which is outside New Haven, so I actually know where that is. Well, uh, that's great. That's uh, the oldest continuously running trolley museum in, in, in the United States. Uh, greetings. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, the chair, the vice chair of the committee, and Dumbo residents. Um, I'm a former resident myself, uh, J Street above uh, Brooklyn Coffee, which uh, is no longer there. And uh, I'm here to propose as founder and CEO of Dumbo Trolley, two questions to you tonight. Should we do this? And how do we do this? So the Dumbo tracks are being reconstructed as decorative only. Uh, and not making them functional ignores their industrial history and uh, is, is a lost experience for future generations. Uh, Adrian, could you go ahead and share screen, please? Are you not seeing the screen? No, oh. um, you need to select share screen, please. Oh, I'm sorry, let me try that again. Okay, how's that? That looks great, thank you. All right, great, thanks. Uh, so, uh, there's a slight lag here. So, Dumbo tracks are being reconstructed as decorative only, we understand, uh, not making them functional, it ignores their industrial history and is a, a lost experience for future generations. A little lag here. So what are the project objectives? We su support restoration of the Dumbo tracks to their former working condition to expand on the Capitol Street reconstruction project. We'd like to run uh, a clean electric battery powered zero emission transit service to dissipate the tourist bottom bottleneck in Washington Street to carry this foot traffic to outline Dum Dumbo businesses, uh, that currently are underserved in winter months uh, with a free local hop on, hop off commuter solution. Uh, as a STEM art school partnership, we'll get to that in a moment uh, with neighborhood schools and to provide, promote local history and civic pride. Uh, we're all looking for a more transit oriented, less car dependent city. So the concerns and issues, we hear them, understand them. Uh, Pedestrian traffic has nearly tripled to 48,000 people over the, the same period uh, 
uh, this year versus uh, 2020. And uh, Washington Street is one of the most photogenic spots uh, in New York, certainly, and, and perhaps even the world. Uh, it's a challenge for people living there, understood. Tourism is not going to, going to go in New York. Visitors are returning in, in large numbers, and there's real optimism about uh, the growth of these levels. Uh, New York City and Co. has uh, estimated 56 million visitors. Uh, that's a 70% increase up from, uh, from, from 2019. The challenge here on the right, as we see, tourism is too localized in the summer, but businesses struggle through the winter. And in a nutshell, we hope to resolve that by carrying these tourists from this location and move them to uh, outlying businesses and eventually on down to Atlantic Avenue and Red Hook, uh, year two, year five. So what are the issues for residents? Uh, this has got to stop. Clearly there's uh, some issues uh, about the volume of tourism. However, this is not gonna go away. This is New York City. The challenge is what do we do with these tourists when they gather here? Where do they go? Uh, after, the, after taking their, their selfie, they stand around and they collect. Obviously, this is frustrating to the neighbors. Uh, we've spoken to people who say they don't want to leave their apartments on Washington Street on the weekend. Clearly, that isn't acceptable. However, what we're proposing is a clean transit system. Yes, it's a vintage model with, uh, with modern technology inside, but carrying 40 passengers, well, that's 10 car loads minimum. We're looking to actually remove cars and uh, the pollution that they have from the streets. As I said, the three to five year plan is to extend the line, uh, the 1.3 1 miles down the Brooklyn Bridge Park Greenway to Atlantic Avenue and then Red Hook. Sorry, a bit sensitive this. Uh... So for businesses, trolleys are a fun and convenient way to experience the many areas of Dumbo visitors might not otherwise discover. Um, the business tax that they generate is key to a function district. Uh, summer tourism sustains these bars and restaurants that we love during the lean winter months. Trolleys have run on Dumbo tracks before. Yes, sir, we know they're freight, but historically the trolleys used to run through Vinegar Hill and the old car barn is actually on 88 Water Street, if you care to go by. I'm just gonna play this video here just to give you a sense of the size and the scale of this vehicle how fast it moves, and uh, just the general uh, sense of what a trolley looks like on Dumbo's tracks. So this is electrically powered. Uh, you'll see the guy walking on the left there, he's got a jumper cable. Uh, we're looking at a much quieter system than this, but as you can see, they're quite narrow, they're about the size of a beautiful box truck. Uh, it's not a significant uh, vehicle that's moving down the street, and what you see, uh, they don't move that fast. You can certainly uh, see them again. You're going to have to speak clear. After some reason, you're coming out through out jumble. So, just a little bit of the uh, uh, historical significance of why we think this should return. So, for baseball fans out there, um, the Brooklyn Dodgers used to be called the Brooklyn Trolley Dodgers because in the 1890s, uh, and the late uh, and the early 1900s uh, around Ebbets Field, the preponderance of trolleys there, people were dodging out of the way. Uh, and that's how they got their name. Uh, so it's an integral part of Brooklyn's history. Uh, they haven't run in Brooklyn for 70 years. We think uh, it's an important part of Brooklyn's history that perhaps uh, we should bring back. So we anticipate, we anticipate uh, retrieving at auction uh, a historic vehicle. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. They're, they're really uh, wonderful pieces of, of historic machinery. And then incorporating into the modern technology. So that would be electric batteries from a new EV, a regenerative braking, reversible seating, uh, and of course, AC, PA, and Wi Fi. Uh, I won't go into the details on this. Uh, you can read them uh, at, at your leisure, but uh, the auction prices for a single truck semi-convertible are in the range of like $200,000 to $300,000. So this is an, an expensive proposition. We'd be looking at two trolleys initially, 
uh, perhaps one in reserve, but two trolleys to, to run on the loop and to carry people around that. So where do we stand currently with DOT? Well, as we know, uh, Plymouth uh, has been constructed. Adam Street is under construction. The work that we've been suffering, and I recall from, uh, from back in the day, uh, was the basic infrastructure that's taken many years to get to this point, and that is water, electric, power, sewer. What we're looking at putting on the top is the uh, the belt, the quarried Belgian blocks, uh, the granite for the bike lane and grouting in between. So there's been some comments um, <clears throat> in the chat and, I, and I'm uh, sensitive to those. Uh, I've had this one myself. I think it's a neat idea, but we need to have done this before they started redoing the streets. Well, how long does it actually take to do this? Understand that there's some sensitivities about street closures but I'd also like to play this video here, which shows Adam Street being surfaced with Belgian blocks and, uh, and grout and the granite. And this took three days. So what does tracks and construction look like? Belgian blocks are actually held together by their own weight. What is between them is grout, essentially, and they're on a grout base. What is beneath them is uh, a very uh, secure and robust infrastructure. Uh, I personally went to speak to the site manager on two occasions here. This is 18 inch concrete reinforced pour on top of all the uh, concrete and, and uh, below surface infrastructure. What you'll notice here on the left is uh, uh, a grooved rail, but it's been filled in, um, which uh, seems not, not quite uh, what we're looking for, obviously, but you also see a barcode. So uh, that is a new old rail <clears throat> that's actually from ArcelorMetal. Uh, there's a shot there. Well, I tracked uh, this down and that is what this rail looks like. And that's where it comes from. It's a company in Luxembourg. Uh, these are not historic rails. Uh, we are looking to <clears throat> continue the line, uh, a groove rail type track. Uh, we simply ask that instead of filling in the groove, we don't fill in the groove and uh, leave the opportunity for future generations to perhaps uh, enjoy rail, uh, the rails and the trolleys that run on them. So to complete this Dumbo loop, which I'll get to in the next frame, we're looking for a, a track extension. Certainly that's an investment. Uh, we feel it's an important one to, to create a green transit at the beginning of a green, green transit loop uh, within Dumba that will extend on down to Atlantic uh, Avenue and Reddick, as we said. So the dotted line is the track extension. This is currently not on the plans of DOT, uh, and that will certainly be an ask that, uh, that we will need, need to uh, finance and, and get uh, constructed. So it uh, looks like about three blocks there. So we're calling this the Dumbo Loop. The brief is to act as a local uh, last block, last few blocks collection service for East River Ferry. Conversations have been had with East River. The proposal would be to deliver an empty trolley at the ferry schedule and pick up the, uh, the tourists and, and commuters from that point and travel them around uh, the Dumbo Loop. Uh, in addition, we pick up the, the uh, commuters and we take them to the other subway stops and also the Brooklyn Navy Yard shuttle that stops over there on York Street for the students that have to walk from the East River Ferry to the Brooklyn Navy Yard shuttle and, and back uh, in the evenings. And this would be a, a complement to the current transit service that uh, is incorporated in the neighborhood. Of course, there'd be Instagram opportunities. Let's enjoy Dumbo's uh, history. Let's talk about its history and let's uh, have opportunities for tourists to take photographs other than on Washington Street. Local business waypoints. Of course, along the way in the cab, uh, the operator would be calling out deals and opportunities and lunch specials and business uh, um, discounts in at and in person that uh, residents and visitors could uh, benefit from. So essentially spread the tourism load around the neighborhood and uh, 
grow the outline businesses that I've spoken to and, and uh, are having a hard time, and especially in winter. There'd be an app for number of residents, uh, free if possible with a verified app. So essentially the, the visitors would be paying for this, uh, for this facility. Uh, subway and bus uh, transfer was also be valid. So uh, we have quite a few followers. As you might imagine, businesses are very much in favor of this. Uh, these are the followers we have. There are many more for those that are watching tonight. Uh, the page wasn't big enough, but this is where we stand. Uh, I'm happy to say that some of the nations and the world's trolley museums uh, have supported this. In fact, uh, our first follower on Twitter was the San Francisco Cable Car Museum. Uh, they certainly understand the value of trolleys to businesses and to the community. Here's some of the comments. Uh, as I said, I know there's uh, some in the chats, but here are some positive and negative ones. Um, the base says this is going to be fire. Uh, Juliana's Pizza says we love our locals and our visitors. This sounds like a positive plan. Uh, Dumbo BK says trolleys will get stuck in gridlock, though. Uh, and you could read the rest, uh, that one up there from Olympia Bar Brooklyn. Very cool concept. Happy support from uh, Mark Jupiter and uh, there's a few other comments there. So other urban trolleys, this isn't a new thing. Uh, Lowell, uh, Savannah, Georgia, New Orleans, there are numerous trolleys around the country. In fact, the provenance of cities have trolleys and you'll notice the distance. Some people have mentioned the route is not significant. Well, you'll see the distances down here is 1.2 miles, one miles. Uh, the route, the initial route phase one that we're proposing is 1.1 mile. So it's certainly in keeping uh, with the distance and uh, clearly these cities feel there's an opportunity uh, for them to be uh, uh, running through their towns. Uh, what does this look like? Well, this isn't high technology. <clears throat> America's been lane tracks for 130 years. Uh, this is concrete and steel. This is not uh, a difficult solution to put down, uh, nor would the extension be. Um, so what does it look like in, uh, in other cities? Well, this is called the Hop. Um, this is in Milwaukee. Uh, they're actually extending their line uh, to, uh, to outlying parts of, of the city. Um, it's a really great uh, employer and uh, it's a really wonderful service that they have down there. So your transportation and public safety committee, we're very sensitive to the safety of pedestrians and cyclists. I know some people have raised this. Uh, there are certainly uh, traffic and warning signs that we would put up uh, to uh, the ADA, ADA compliant and some street signs that would advise in addition to a trolley safety campaign of uh, videos, et cetera, et cetera. So how do we fund this? Well, <clears throat> there's certainly a, a large fund through the bipartisan infrastructure law, uh, many billions of dollars. Uh, we'd be looking for project sponsors. This is, I think, the second part of the question, and perhaps uh, we will come to that in, in future meetings, but we would hope that the NTA, DOT, and City of State, uh, and hopefully local electives would support this, and uh, hopefully that the, a funding stream would be found. Uh, as previously mentioned, historic trolleys uh, are in the range of two to $300,000. We would modify this to carry in a cradle uh, an EV battery, uh, ADA compliant and uh, by American. So the infrastructure, uh, we're not, to be clear, we're not digging up the, the sewer, the gas domains. We're simply uh, asking that the, the future lines that are laid are uh, trolley compliant, essentially and that uh, we're looking for an extension to the, to the current line. The lines that might have to be adjusted, as we've seen, it doesn't take that long to lay uh, the surface. Um, so we'd hope that would be forthcoming. Certainly this would require FDA state regulation, um, New York safety oversight, operator training and MTA um, operating agreement. That's all a given. So the indirect benefits of the streetcar system can be massive and <clears throat> more than just the revenue generated by fares. What do we mean by that? Well, I was really thrilled this morning to go down to uh, the Brooklyn Steam Center 
And I met with Diamano uh, Master Andrea, who's the CT director down there. <clears throat> and he wholeheartedly supported this idea. In fact, he wrote, this Brooklyn STEAM Center can foresee potential collaborative efforts in several ways, including paid internship opportunities uh, to utilize the service, to connect young people with a newly accessible part of their community. He said, he wrote, I hope we can work together to revitalize a piece of history while also giving new age scholars an opportunity to engage in the past for their economically stable future. So what we envision um, with these scholars, there'd be CAD, there'd be neuro renewables, there'd be fabrication and engineering. So the scholars would engage in real world engineering to problem solve and create and to learn with the trolleys in our car barn uh, and also with the, uh, the CTA program they have within Brooklyn Steam. Um, of course, we had a, we'd have occasion site uh, cars, <clears throat> and let's call this the softer side of branding. Uh, there's a, a certain amount of dis disassociation that comes from living in tower blocks, and an opportunity to gather on a trolley with your morning Starbucks, be greeted by an operator who, by your name, who knows you to uh, to talk to your neighbours as you uh, cross uh, Dumbo I, I, has certain value. Uh, couples might meet and they might have stories to tell. I'm going to end with uh, the National Conference of State Historic Preservation Officers who said this in 2019, a good strategy for bringing back neighbourhoods is reusing our existing structures, the ones that made us great in the past. It's a labour of love to do so. It requires vision, passion and courage. Thank you very much for your time. I'm happy to take any questions. Just gonna allow uh, questions from uh, the committee. John Quintus first. Thank you. Um, you answered the, one of my questions, which was how long the route is in one of those last slides, but what's the distance from, uh, but that's a loop. So that means if you stretched out those two, if you pulled the lines taut so that it was just a back and forth, that would only be a half a mile. But because of the way it weaves through Dumbo, have you measured, and, and um, it, it obviously we could measure it on, on Google Maps, but it would appear to me that the distance from the furthest point from, it looks like uh, uh, Old Fulton and uh, I guess that's, uh, that's not front, whatever the name of that short street is, and the far um, J and uh, I don't even know what the name of the street on the water is, it has to be a lot less than a half a mile. What other than creating, as someone has said, a Disney-like ride, like the train that goes around Disneyland, who would ride this other than tourists who, if they took the whole loop, would get little of a ride. They'd see, they, they would pass themselves at least once and, and would be a couple of hundred feet from themselves, be, uh, you know, as, as the loop, the two parallels that are there. What kind of projections do you have or what kind of anticipation of the number of users that you would actually get in this configuration, forgetting about any extensions? It's a good question. The total length, and I've walked out and I've measured it, is 1.1 miles, which is in keeping with other city distances of uh, the loops that they have. Uh, the tourists that come in are congregating in Washington Street and they're not going to go away. This is an opportunity to gather them and to dissipate them throughout the community uh, and to other businesses as been previously mentioned. Um, as far as it being- yeah, But how are you going to get them off? What's the, what's your, what's the incentive for any of them to get off? After they've ridden less than a half a mile, and any and and you know from from the furthest point to the other furthest point is let's say 0.6 of a mile. I think it's less. 
what, what's the incentive for anybody to get off other than to come back to where they were, where they got on? And how many stops are you going to have? Well, we're looking at probably four or five stops along the way, the Instagram moments, there would definitely be pauses in the trolley and visitors could get off and take a photograph or not get off and take a photograph. Uh, as far as the, the Disney-like thing, I mean, this would be an 1897 trolley, uh, reconfigured, uh, it's authentic. It's in fact, likely gonna be one of the trolleys that run, ran through Vinegar Hill. They are still available. So there's certainly an opportunity to grow uh, the tourism uh, aspect of things uh, and uh, as mentioned to carry them around and one would hope they would stop off at businesses uh, along the way and be encouraged to stop along bit, uh, business along the way. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm is it going to be an on and off ticket? Are they going to be able to get on and off with one yeah, ticket? hop on hop off profile. John I'm going to move it on to John. Yeah, thank you. Thank you sir. John is Good afternoon, Sid, and uh, Transportation Committee. Um, my question is about the uh, two questions. First is about the ADA compliance. Uh, are you suggesting that the cabs are equipped to handle both wheelchairs and strollers? And how would those folks get onto the, the cab? That's the first question. And then the second question is, have you accomplished any other kind of installation similar to this anywhere else in the United States or Europe? So, we Mr. Are Mr. Do, you're frozen. Maybe turn off your video. So to answer your question, uh, and thank you for the question. Uh, we're hoping to partner with the STEAM scholars and with oversight from their tutors and outs, outside experts who would come in and oversee their designs uh, to create an ADA compliant vehicle. They, that is possible to do this. It's certainly a retrofit in as much as uh, we think it's possible to do that. Uh, we would be looking to, as you say, strollers and an additional uh, uh, ADA chairlift ramp to be incorporated on the rear of the vehicle. Um, I can't say that I've uh, initiated a trolley service in any other city in, a, in, in America or the world, but uh, certainly this would be a first. Okay. Nicole? I'm not clear on like who you are exactly and what your relationship is. And by you, I mean like the group that would be operating this and what their relationship is to MTA, DOT, um, are these fairs going to your organization? Um, what's the role of the TWU in this? Um, like, well, how does this fit into the greater public transportation landscape of New York? Um, or is this like a, supposed to be a completely private um, enterprise, including but not limited to the funding for it? Sure. Um, so historically, cities pay for the, the tracks and private companies pay for the trolleys, the training, the uh, maintenance and the operations. And so that's generally the system that, that's worked uh, historically in, in, your, in New York. Um, as far as the conversations with DOT, those have not been had yet. This is an uh, initial conversation with uh, the community board to get a sense of uh, their, their interest level and those conversations will certainly be had. Uh, at a later day. And so the, the fares would not be integrated into any MTA um, operations? They'd be fares that go to Dumbo Trolley operations? That, that would be, uh, that hasn't been decided yet, but that might be a possibility. I mean, there's certainly, there would be a need to fund the operators and the maintenance and, and the purchase of these trolleys and the ongoing um, uh, maintenance system and uh, we would love to uh, engage uh, uh, interns from from uh, steam we've already had a conversation with uh, with steam about that and so there's certain possibilities about uh, uh, work uh, after after school and, and work programs for, for that group good Sandy
Mute. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, so um, my question is, uh, this seems to be a tourist loop. And um, I know you said you have support from the businesses, but was there any out, I mean, there were six residents who got on, six out of six said no. Um, and did you do outreach to the neighborhood organizations like DNA and DOC, DAC, I think it's DAC, uh, Dumbo Action Committee and yeah. Dumbo Neighborhood um, Association? Yeah, those guys, we certainly did reach uh, out to those guys. Um, they weren't supportive, uh, uh, they hadn't seen the proposal and we would hope that they might reconsider. So you did no outreach to the people, the residents of Dumbo, um, Fulton Ferry Landing. What, do you go to Vinegar Hill? I, I don't remember the map exactly. Yeah, um, well, based on the assumption that business owners are residents too, uh, those are the comments that we've received uh, in addition to some comments uh, from residents specifically on Washington Street who are canvassed. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sandy. Patrick, go ahead. I just want Patrick, go ahead. Hi, uh, uh, Patrick Kalecki, member of the committee. Um, so I don't want to belabor the point of, of saying this is not such a great idea because I think everyone else has said that. Um, I think you might look elsewhere. Um, I'll, I'll say this, actually. I work for the MTA, so I understand and I know people and I have a little bit of inclination myself to really, really like trains. And it sounds like that's what you, you do. You like trains. And I appreciate that. But this is not needed. There's no origin and destination need. There's no transportation network need. Um, you know, I know there's some interest there or there was some interest in, in Red Hook for a trolley. I don't know where that went. I don't know if the community supports it. I think you really need to look elsewhere. Uh, you know, as the gentleman earlier said, like there's way too much going on down there already. So anyway, good luck. Thank you, Brian. That'll be the last board person, and then I'm going to go to Robin for a question. Go ahead, Brian. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess I uh, want to voice similar concerns to Patrick. So I've been on the hop. I've been on the you know the the Grove streetcar. I've been on the uh, streetcar in New Orleans and and in Milwaukee, in New Orleans, um, in Seattle. I mean, they they serve you know, destinations that are at least, you know, a, a, a distance that is uh, not not so easily walkable. And so I, I don't see that like this proposal on its face is flawed, but I'm just curious why you didn't choose something more ambitious to, you know, link somewhere farther along uh, the waterfront or to the train stations. Um, I, I, you know, like I, I could see cost, um, as like a factor, but I'm wondering if if you have considered maybe choosing something that is more transportation oriented, so that you can build a larger base of support. If that's what you're after. Yeah. Well, uh, as previously mentioned, uh, we're looking to extend year three to five down to Atlantic Avenue along the Brooklyn Bridge Park Greenway, which is uh, 1.3 miles, and then uh, further on down to to uh, Red Hook. The Many groups have come before uh, Dumbo Trolley to try and bring clean transit trolleys in Brooklyn. They failed essentially because they tried to do too much. Uh, they, uh, the, the reach that they've uh, <clears throat> proposed is almost half of Brooklyn and uh, it never, they never get off the ground for that reason. So we're looking to start small and localized and prove that it's success. It's a success. Prove that we can actually carry passengers away from the hotspots to other outlying areas, and then on down to uh, to the Brooklyn Bridge uh, areas that we previously discussed. Okay, Julian, I already announced that uh, that uh, Brian was the last board member. So, Robin, you can uh, ask your question. Robin. Hello. Yeah, Robin, you, yeah, can, ask, you, you can ask your question. Okay, I am also a tenant at 200 Shimmerhorn Street and I am disabled. And 
twice I almost got hit by bikes. Um, Robin, Robin, this is not the time, unfortunately. You, no. the, this is the this is we, this was the Skirmahorn Bond presentation will take place next. Right now we're oh, okay. Here. All right, okay. Up the, drum, the Dumbo trolley. Uh, I'm I'm gonna make the last comment. Uh, I've I've been around I've been around I actually rode the Red Hook trolley. And I've also rode the, the one in Lowell, Massachusetts, which is where the Bread and Roses strike took place. For those of you who don't know Lowell, Massachusetts. In any case, and uh, uh, while I would like to see additional traffic uh, transit, I do think that this is problematic. I don't think we're taking a vote on this tonight. Uh, although the, if, a, if a committee member wants to make a motion, they're capable of doing that. Uh, we wish you luck. We thank you for the presentation. And uh, we're going to uh, move on. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is Skirmahorn and Bond. This is for, at this point, this is for committee members only to discuss the proposal to uh, make a bond to change the traffic pattern at Bond and Skirmahorn to reverse Bond, I believe it is. For, I don't know if it's one block or two blocks. All right. But the proposal is to uh, uh, do that. So I don't know. Do we have a presentation on this tonight, uh, or is it just a discussion, Taya? It is a discussion, but I believe at least one of the committee members does have visuals to share. And, and who's that? Uh, Mr. Howell. One moment, please. Oh, I, I, that was under the impression I'd be sharing now, but I'm happy to do that. One second. Okay, you should be able to share now. Ryan, you can share it now if you're ready. Uh, it's still saying host disabled participant screen sharing. Maybe it's not the. Oh, it sometimes I, it takes a couple of seconds to go through. It might be just because I'm, I'm on two devices. May have been the other device. What is the name of the other device? Uh, oh, it's just Brian Howell. <laughs> One second. Without the BKCB2 monitor. Okay, try now. Thank you. There we go. Um, by the way, uh, just in case um, Phil don't remember, we 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 got a presentation from DOT a little under six years ago about converting this one block um, uh, uh, because it was previously one way um, northbound. Um, so just uh, reminding us. Um, I wanted to just share a couple of, of points. Um, I don't have a any specific feelings as to whether or not this is a good or a bad idea. I, I think it would be fine for DOT to study it. Um, but this is the, the current, I guess, state of the, of the bike lane on, on Bond Street. Um, and if it's blocked now, you know, you have, you're forced out in the traffic, but if it's blocked and it's a contraflow lane, um, I'm sorry, I guess the part that I missed was the reason we, were asked to reverse that block of bond in the past was to provide a connection between DeKalb and Scrumhorn. Um, and, you know, if we were to reverse the, the traffic lane and, and maintain a contraflow lane, um, which I think is a decent proposal, uh, it can't be something that's so easily blocked uh, like this because then people are forced into oncoming traffic. Um, and I just wanted to share a couple of ways that like we could do a contraflow protected lane if we so choose and you know decide to uh, reverse our earlier decision and convert the street back into uh, one way northbound traffic. Um, this is outside of Union Square um, on Park Avenue South. Um, if you notice these little black and white uh, devices are called armadillos. Um, they deter people from 
driving into it because you fear that you might, you know, bottom out your car. Um, in Washington, D.C., they use a mixture of these thick bollards and concrete curbs uh, to deter people. Um, and so uh, I just want to make it clear that, you know, if we if we decide to do this, we should probably try to preserve the bike connection, which is what we were creating six years ago. Um, and here are ways that we could do it and make sure that it's a protected one. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Sandy. Sandy, you're muted. Thank you. Am I, can you hear me now? We can hear you now, Sandy. Okay, can you see me? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so I started to say, is this only about changing the direction of traffic on Bond Street? Because I would like to say something about the whole design, you know, a little bit more than Bond Street. And if you don't want me to talk right now, I can hold off. Oh, well, this is really supposed to be about Bond Street and Skirmhorn. Why don't we hold off? I mean, the, the idea was here I mean, that- For the, tonight, the, I'll hold off for a little later in the discussion tonight. Yeah, hold on for later on. I understand. Mr. But, Meyer, Mr. Meyer, for context, I'd like to share the letter from Lincoln Ressler's office, please. Please go right ahead. Thank you. One moment. This was the letter sent on October 6th from Council Member Lincoln Ressler to Keith Bray, the Brooklyn Borough Commissioner of the DOT. Commissioner Bray, as representatives of downtown Brooklyn, we deeply thank the DOT swift implementation of the Skirmerhorn redesign. The redesign brought traffic calming to the corridor and a desperately needed two-way protected bike lane through the heart of downtown Brooklyn. As a result of the one-way conversion on Skirmerhorn, our offices, and I will insert anecdotally as well as the district offices, received numerous complaints regarding the conversions impact on traffic patterns on the surrounding streets. The primary concern is that there are currently no northbound connections south of Skirmerhorn between Smith and Flatbush. Therefore, we urge the DOT to extend Bond Street's northbound direction one block to Livingston. We believe that this proposal will improve traffic flow and enhance the public's access to essential services, deliveries, and residences. I, be, I, be, I believe, frankly, that that's not the block that uh, Brian showed. It's the Brian. It's the next block down, and the oh, idea is that. And and I I believe the idea, frankly, is to get it so that the residents can get in and out easier because of the way the street is configured. Now uh, we can either ask. And, and, and I don't know, I see Sandy has her hand up again, again, but the idea here on this one, Sandy, is you, are you, is it about this, Sandy, or something else? No, take I your, didn't, I didn't take my hand down before. Hand I have up. a problem with the whole thing. I'll, I'll lower my hand. Thank you. This is the item on the agenda. If you can see my arrow and the direction right. it goes on the Google map, you'll notice that on street is south, currently south between Livingston and Skirmerhorn, and it is northbound between State and Skirmerhorn. The request is to change this single block. Right, back, um, back, back to where it was a few years ago. And it allows the residents who are on uh, Skirmerhorn, a State, Skirmerhorn and State, to have a way of getting out relatively easily without bouncing into traffic. And I think that that's what they're asking for. Mr. Agalad, who's shaking his head yes, agrees with me. And that's all this is. It's relatively simple that the that DOT has asked us, because we asked DOT to study it, and DOT came, came back and said they won't study it unless we formally ask them to. Kate? I would go ahead and make a motion. Um, to request DOT to formally study this, if that's what you know they're waiting on from the committee, it seems like there's enough resident feedback and Lincoln Wrestlers Council office as well saying it's worth worth looking at. Okay, I'm going to second. I second. That. I second. Okay, let, let Esther be the second. Shannon, do you have a comment quickly? 
Um, yes, I had a comment and I am a resident of 33 bond, which is in that section that would be affected by the change. And I just want to say, I know myself and a number of people in this building would also be in favor of this. It doesn't just affect State Street. It doesn't just affect Shermerhorn. Now on bond, what used to be easy commute is chaos. We have ambulances going one way down our street that's currently going the other way. We've got ambulances in the bike lane. Um, and so I think this affects just even more uh, people that deserve to have equity in the conversation. Julia, do you want to like to say something? I would just I'd like to ask if um, we could amend the motion, Nicole, to potentially include what Brian suggested, which is maintaining the um, bike path um, as a as a contra flow bikeway with physical deterrence um, to cars entering into that bike path. She she already agreed. I saw. And and Aguilar, do you want to say something? Or are you just agreeing with what we're saying? Yes, he said yes. Uh, 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 Brian, would you like to say something additional? Yeah, I was wondering if we could amend that to say not physical protection, but um, I, I'm worried. I mean, you, what DOT often uses are flex posts that can be easily driven over and driven between. I'd like, you know. Uh, something you know, per permanent and physically separating. Is that okay? Uh, I don't think that that's specific enough. I'd say, um, you know, uh, some, I don't want to be specific as to like whether they use armadillos or a concrete curb, but I do want to be specific that flex posts don't cut it here, if, if okay. you know what I mean. All right. um, as, as, a, as, a, as a bended, who wants a to safety, say? A safety barrier? Um, I just, I don't know what the right wording is here. If anybody had safety barrier feels a little too vague. Um, well, you better come up with some language for the motion. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jersey barrier would be great, um, but- um, They're not gonna put a Jersey barrier. Drag yeah. drag the anchor, Brian. Sure. Uh, Might as well say Jersey barrier. Something no, with structural cause... integrity. <laughs> something yeah. with stru I agree with something with structural integrity, but they're not gonna put Jersey barriers. Substantial curve. Well, that's what we. That's yeah. what you know. Yeah, I mean a, a, a physical but curve. They're right? gonna. They're gonna. They're gonna use something which in which, which which is within their current playbook or whatever they tool tool book toolkit. All right, they're not going into something tool else. Kit. Right, something, so we, within, but, current, something within their current toolkit. The armadillos are are currently being trialed as part of the toolkit. So I would say yeah. the armadillos. All right. But That's also a, make sure it's not like a flex, a plastic flex pose. You know, there has to be a, like a, a right. something that stops something. Ciro, you want to say something quickly? Yeah, I, I just like, I'm hearing all these comments. I would just like you to read the motion again so we can understand what we're voting on. Go ahead, John. Well, I have it as that they should study reversing Bond Street between Skimmerhorn and Livingston from southbound to northbound only and protect the existing bike lane by barriers that uh, create structural integrity. Or, I mean, I have physical curve as another choice of words, but, or separate, I guess it's by a physical separation between the bike lane and traffic. Raised physical separation? Is that the? I think we're that maintaining, that maintaining the bike lane. We're maintaining the bike lane and adding some sort of barrier. Look, we can't, we, uh, uh, you know, I think we have to say that, uh, as Sid mentioned, that we're, we're, not the, we're not the experts that DOT will have to determine what it is to do that. They have to consider issues beyond just bikes from, they have to consider that what kind of traffic will be on that street and what it might do to that. You know, if, if it's, I don't, Bond's very narrow. And the pictures that Brian showed, I, I think there's a parking lane there. So in, in an event of emergency, you're gonna, you know, right. a, a fire truck is gonna have to go yeah, over they're, those they're gonna, Right, they're, they're the, you know, the, 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 one, the barriers that they had in Washington, which were the high level, uh, post, which are cement, they're not going to put. 
they might put something low level that a fire truck could go. How about to. utilize a safety uh, a safety barrier? Utilize a a, a a traditional safety barrier that is uh, that's used. Let them take let them yeah, take no, no, it no, out. But, but they, do if it. you do that, they're going to just put the flexible core things in. I think leave it as we currently have it. I, I have a I have a question whether or not we want to support actually doing the reversing, not just merely studying it. Right, uh, and it's we're not going to we're not going to do anything without a study. So I don't see what no they might any, all right whatever. Well, study it and make the change. They said they want us to say they want to study. If we say we want it to reverse, they'll okay, say we're yeah. not going to do anything to right, you. So tell we'll us leave, we'll to leave it the way it is. Study. Request that DOT exercise analyze this proposal. Everybody, can, put can hand we down. say that we're also Everybody in favor? Everybody, put your hand down. I'm not going to call on anybody else right now. The only one I'm going to call on is so we have a motion that's before the committee. You want to read it one last time? Well, I didn't. I, I read it in 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 the disjunctive because I'm not sure what the committee was and. Who made the motion? I have Kate making Kate, the motion. Make, yeah, Kate makes yeah, the motion. Somebody said Nicole along the way, but it is Kate. Okay. Right. We request that DOT study the reversal of the direction of bond between Skimmerhorn and Livingston from southbound to northbound while, I think we should say that, while protecting the existing bike lane by a barrier with structural integrity. And I'm gonna call on Denise, you, have, you wanna raise something else? Go ahead, Denise. Mr. Meyer, Denise I'm just not trying to community. figure out how do Meyer. I get out of my building to get to this grocery store, to get across the street. It's horrible out here. I, take a walk around here. The traffic is bad. Come take a walk around here. We got to go to the grocery store, subway, to the garages to get our cars. It's bad. Somebody, please, this committee, come and take a walk around here. Then you can't even walk across the street because Goodwill has all the homeless people standing out there with all the garbage. Please come take a walk around here. Okay. Shannon, you want to say something bit further? Mr. Meyer, there's a motion on the floor that hasn't been voted on, correct? Okay, you're right. I'm making a, 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 all the, everybody else put their hands down, please, before so I can take the motion. Is there no more discussion on the motion? No more discussion. Okay, all in favor, raise your hand. Remember, it's only the committee that can vote. You use the raise hand feature. Please, all in favor. Uh, Mr. Coyot, you are not a committee member. Thank you. I don't see everybody, but- I haven't voted that. yet. I'm, I haven't voted. I'm, I, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in favor. Okay, uh, all opposed. Please put your hand down for in favor. Hand down, please. All opposed. No Absten hands. Abstentions. Ms. Balboza. Hey, Sandy, you, you abstained? John, do abstain. abstained. Also. Okay. Please, please record my vote is for it. All right. So I have a 10 0 2, and that's right. We have 12 people attending. So that's everybody. Thank you. Next thing on the agenda is my chairman's report. Uh, can you uh, put up the BQE central vision process thing, please, Taya, if you can get to it? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? The Brooklyn central vision process page. And can you open up where it does about and do the timeline? All right, this is the, uh, I attended the, there were two meetings uh, 
Uh, last week, one was last week, one was this week. There was a phys physical meeting that DOT conducted on the central section of the BQE. And this is a visioning of what the corridor is supposed to look at, look like. The first meeting took place, well, there was a general meeting about a week, about two weeks ago. And there was the specific one about the central, and we are, the central area is the area from uh, uh, Atlantic Avenue to Sand Street. It's the area that's within, BQ, within CB2. And uh, it's the area that we've been talking about that I first attended the first meeting in 2005, believe it or not, all right? And they're, they're conducting a new engagement and uh, review of all the stuff that's occurred before in order to try to come up with a new design, with a new inclusive design that, uh, and they, they're, tr they're, they're trying to complete that by the end, by the early 2024. I mean, the, you know, they, they, the meeting was interesting. They had new uh, and different uh, other city proposals and they're looking again at what they can do and, and how much it's gonna cost. And, and, and then they're gonna start the design phase in 2024 with looking to begin the actual construction in, two, in 2026. That is a very ambitious time period, given that this has been going on since 2005 and 16 years later, we're back to looking at engagement and first steps, baby steps all over again. At the same time, they're going to be doing the ongoing monitoring and repairs. And within the next few weekends, it's going to be, the BQE will be, have one lane, one additional lane closed. It will be only one lane. They will maintain at least one lane during that part of the construction. Sometime during the future construction, it will be closed completely during the weekend. Uh, they do not anticipate closing it more than that. When they close it, when it's closed, they will have additional people out uh, directing traffic on Atlantic Avenue, hopefully uh, uh, making it move somewhat. Uh, some of the issues that have come up with doing that, of course, uh, also means move, they want to move trucks to pros over to the Prospect Expressway and down Caton Avenue. That has raised issues in other sections of Brooklyn that people have not been very happy about. Uh, the it, it's it's you know there there are meetings going to be more meetings scheduled for December for the central portion, uh, more engagement section central for the central portion. Uh, uh, the engagement uh, will be uh, uh, for the north section, the south section, the north section is the section from Sand Street to uh, the Kosciuszko Bridge. The south section is from uh, from Atlantic Avenue to the Verrazano's Bridge, uh, includes the area that goes through Cobble Hill and uh, planning implementation. So they're, they're bringing the engagement the design implementation of short-term improvements. I'm not sure what they, uh, if they have any funding for that, but there's something that they're going to be looking at as well. They're also talking about uh, the freight diversion to try to get as many trucks, especially the bigger trucks, off the BQE completely. Uh, my, uh, my own proposal for that, my own suggestion about that is to finish the Cross Harbor Tunnel, which will cost a number of million dollars. One of the big problems, and as you can see from the way this is done now, uh, you can see that the it's the inner lane on the upper section that is closed northbound, which is technically uh, eastbound, I believe. All right, uh, but that section is the one that's closed, and that's causing a real problem on Grace Court, from what I understand, because. The trucks move to the outer lane, as you can see from the, where the rider truck is over there. And that is making the whole thing shake. Now, when you look at this, all right? I don't think you can see this, all right? 
when you look at this, it actually shows uh, the other lane being closed, but I think that that's just a mistake in the printing. In any case, those are what's coming up. You know, this is an area that, that there's going to be a lot of changes in. Uh, there is a, a council that for some reason, nobody from the, uh, Patrick Kalaki is on that, all right? Uh, but as they do, he does that as part of his north. Yeah, I'm on it. Yes, yeah, but on the, as part of your North Heights committee membership, nothing to do with CB two. Correct. Right. Well, uh, no. I certainly identify myself as a member of CB two. But you were not appointed by CB two. Yes. It was, they were people were selected by DOT, so it wasn't really an appointment by organization. Well, CB, I, I can tell you that the community board too asked for a, rep to a representative on the panel to be able to appoint, and in fact, uh, there are a lot of other people who have appointed people to it, but CB2 has not, all right. In any case, so so that's my report on this for this night. We have we I have I have I've written. <laughs> to and I've written both to uh, Lenny and uh, to uh, CB and to DOT to ask for them to appoint someone from CB2. I would uh, that it's not my authority to appoint. That's Lenny's authority to appoint. Uh, uh, if they say no, they say no. I'm just alerting you. That's what's going on. Uh, also, in 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 my in my uh, uh, committee chair's report. Uh, the DOT has asked for our comments on the loaning zones on Atlantic Avenue. And I discussed this earlier with uh, Sandy by email back and forth that that uh, uh, it is something that, that I would like I would like to hear from the board and the committee what their suggestions are for this. It may come. It, it it may come on next for next meeting, so that we can get more uh, uh, more more responses from the community about the specific issue of uh, of uh, uh, the Atlantic Avenue loading zones was open for public comment. So I don't know if anybody wants to comment on it tonight or we'll put it on the agenda for next week. Uh, I know Sandy and the AA, the Atlantic Avenue, uh, uh, Atlantic, Sandy, why don't you make a comment? Well, um, I sent the letter that we wrote. It wasn't really a letter because we already had a meeting. So we weren't asking for the meeting. We were having the meeting and I was writing all this right before the meeting so DOT would know uh, uh, what our thoughts were. Um, so uh, I don't know if you wanna you know, pass that out to the committee, but um, um, I, you know, it really, it really wasn't studied. We questioned the whole way they came up with these 18 loading zones. But one of the reasons is because Atlantic Avenue is congested and, and a lot of it's naturally congested, but when you do, when you remove a lane of traffic in one direction from Skirmahorn Street and direct the trucks and that traffic to Atlantic Avenue, uh, we get more traffic. The BQE, um, when the trucks, the overweight trucks have to come off the BQE, they come down Atlantic Avenue and then 4th Avenue uh, one way north of Atlantic made cars going up 4th Avenue turn onto Atlantic um, uh, to make a left and then turn on to 3rd Avenue making a right to get back to Flatbush, well, to get to Flatbush where they want to go. So they keep directing traffic to Atlantic Avenue. We are a vision zero priority corridor and we're not treated very well. Um, so we had, we spoke, we met with DOT and park, parking planning, uh, the people who determined that we should have 18 loading zones. And um, the one thing that Sid and I went back and, well, discussed by email was uh, our, um, 
our recommendation to have a multi, if, if, you know, if we study it correctly and determine how many we actually need or how they're gonna be used, we ask them to study um, the existing loading zone at Trader Joe's, which is not used correctly. It's filled with permit parkers all day long. And then, uh, you know, the, the Trader Joe uh, trucks pull in in the evening, but they don't necessarily go to the curb. Um, they park in the, in the traffic lane. So, so one of the things we asked for was that they study um, that, that loading zone that's existing and also we talked about during, doing a survey. And one of the big things uh, that, that will happen that we're asking for is if it does happen um, that we want the loading zones to be um, multi, multi, have multi uses. So uh, from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. the trucks can use it, but then from, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., it would be for customer parking. And they seem to, um, the way I heard it, they seem to agree that that, that was uh, something that, that would happen or could happen. But they also said they would be, be competing with permit parkers. In other words, nobody ever wants to do anything about the permit parkers. So if they put the loading zones in and they're not gonna get rid of the permit parkers, then there's no sense in making loading zones because the permit <laughs> parkers are there all from eight in the morning to like 4.30, five o'clock. Then they're just making parking for permit parkers. I, 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 we, I think that I wrote the same thing to them that they have to, in order, if they're gonna do this, they have to make this a no permit, permit zone. Right, and I was, I, I, and I, I, I said we had a couple of other people from um, Atlantic Avenue and one was a merchant from uh, Make a Frame. Um, and we, you know, if, if they're gonna do this, then if they do it right, we could get rid of the permit parkers because they, they wouldn't be able to park when they come to work so they couldn't come. So right now my block has mostly permit parkers and we also have um, uh, dining sheds that take up parking. And, you know, we wanna make sure that the merchants are gonna be able to stay in business. Um, you know, it's not just the neighborhood, Atlantic Avenue is a destination. And um, so there were several, um, you know, recommendations that we made. Uh, could we send a letter to the committee? Is that a good way to do it? Or, or a letter from the bid? Taya, anybody said? Yeah, we, we, you know, we could, I mean, we, the, I mean because, should I keep because, them off? because it wasn't on the agenda, all right, we really technically shouldn't vote on something that wasn't on the agenda where we haven't given the public notice about. So if you want to put it on the agenda for next meeting, we can do that. All right, that probably is the best idea, and that way it gives our, our opportunity for the the whole community to be heard. Okay. Okay. Well, we you know we were just um, actually the bid was not notified. The notification about this came to the councilman's office, uh, uh, Councilman Ressler, and he said send it to the bid. So as soon as we saw it, we we asked for a meeting. Um, so, you know, um, we plan to start to deal with this. Um, it wouldn't be bad if the community board supported, you know, uh, our recommendations or, or that the, um, I mean, to put in 18 loading docks all at once would not be a good idea. I think it, if, you know, we should try a couple, see how they work. And the commitment has to be made to get to, to get rid of the permit parkers. Um, okay. okay, Sandy. Brian, yeah. do you want to say something? I have a question uh, for Sandy, if that's okay. Um, the, I wasn't sure whether you said that the DOT had not yet met with the bid, um, or if they had. I, just, I remember back when we uh, were discussing the extension of the bus lanes on Fulton Street, the, um, 
DOD went and worked with um, FAB and like surveyed each of the businesses to determine like the loading zone hours that were best for them and actually like, you know, change the proposal around because they found that the people actually prefer different loading zone hour. I wonder if they've done the same with the businesses on Atlantic, just sort of surveyed for preferred hours for loading. Yes, um, thank you for that question, Brian. So I said, we, we did meet with um, Keith Bray and the people, two people from um, parking planning who determined this by just taking one walk down Atlantic Avenue basically and determined that there's traffic. So we know there's traffic, but whether we need 18 loading zones, um, it depends how it's done. We're, so we, we do plan to, we're getting in a new executive director on Monday. We do plan to engage with uh, parking planning. We, we talked about doing a survey. Um, and I, again, I mentioned to study the existing, there are two loading zones to study those to see how they operate. And also this permit parking thing is a big issue. So, so um, but Taya um, emailed about it yesterday, I think, well, I think said- So, let, so let's, let's, let's do this. Yeah. Let's write a letter to uh, to DOT telling them that we would like an opportunity to weigh in on this and let's schedule it for the next uh, committee meeting so we give notice to the public. Let's not finish going through it tonight. Let's let's write a letter to DOT asking for a di for time for us to weigh in on this and, and, and schedule and put it on the next agenda. Hearing, I'm not gonna do this, hearing no objection, that's what's gonna happen, okay? Thank you. All right. Thank All right. you. The next thing is the other committee business. And, and I know, John, you wanted to raise something. So please go ahead. I had a couple of items, Sid, for the entire committee. Um, you might recall decades ago, we had a representative from DOT attend every community board to transportation committee meeting so that DOT was up to speed exactly what the issues were from the community. To be very frank with you, these meetings have gotten extremely long and convoluted and we keep going in circles because no one from DOT is here to represent DOT. Everything takes at least a month to respond to. So why can't we not have a DOT representative for two hours a month, attend the community board to transportation and public safety committee meeting as what used to be the case. And a lot of these issues get solved you know, when the DLT John, You know we have asked for that on more than one occasion. But but Sid, you didn't get it. Look, John, you could do it again. I don't mind. We I, have to do it. I raise yeah. it with, believe me, I raise it with them every time I see it. All right. We need to make, so, we got to stand on our heads and kick until our face turns red. So move they on, to, must you, right, so move on to your next point, please. My next point is every time a change is made in any corridor downtown Brooklyn, it impacts other corridors. So we celebrate what happened on Thurmond Street and Livingston Street, and we don't know. You're frozen again, so the side blocks and the results are felt elsewhere. Why don't we have a plan for traffic? Mr. John, can you turn your camera off so that we can hear you, please? Because we hear about every one, one about every third word. Okay, try again, please. My solution to the BQE cantilever is to run a trolley over it. And this way we'll get it off. <laughs> okay, thank you, John. Patrick, you're up next. Sorry, just trouble with mute. Um, I love the trolley idea on the BQE. Wow, that's great. <laughs> um, so Sid, uh, we had uh, some email exchanges in the group uh, about uh, the tolling issue. Um, and I know that you didn't like the idea of, of discussing it. Um, there are certainly many, many. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What do you mean I don't like the idea me, of discussing let it? Me, 
Let me finish. No, 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 no. I I didn't stop. Excuse me. I didn't stop when when I said there's an appropriate time for it. That's all I said. I didn't stop for the discussion. Please don't put words in my mouth. It's wrong, inappropriate, and not acceptable to me. Okay. Now go ahead, do it now. uh, Okay. All right. Yeah. No need to dispute it. But um, uh, how do I get it on the agenda? I'm sorry, Patrick, hey, could you that? I, I lost the thread in all of that. Could you please repeat the question? How do we get, how do we get uh, the tolling on the agenda? Um, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm particularly interested in it as a tool for BQE design, uh, but it is a larger issue. I have very strong feelings about it. I know a lot of people would disagree with my strong feelings. Uh, I think it's really good, a good idea to discuss. Okay, so how, I, I understand like, the question. So the, the agenda the agenda is the is is up to the committee chair. Uh, okay, all right. Committee chair, would you put it on the agenda? We it requires state action. It's not a city thing. It's a state thing. It requires a change in state law to allow it to be told. All right. It is a state action, not a city one. We are a city agency, not a state one. Please write your state representative. He said, come on. We, no, we're, it's we're, true. We're, we're, we're an advisory organization. No, Thank within, you. Within, realm. within the city. <laughs> then why do, we, why do we, we advise address? anybody? Yeah. That's a state organization. What's the state organization? Why? Why are we? Why are we? It's the MTA. The MTA is a state organization. Why do we? Why is that ever on the agenda? Because it's part. It's part of the city charter. No, it's not. What are the you talking city, about? The MTA has a rep- <laughs> is required. The MTA is required to get local input. All right. Well, I would like tolling to be on the agenda. It is a very useful. Uh, important idea. I will that consider it with, with. I will consider with Lenny at the, for the next meeting. Cyril, you. you're up. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Sid. I, I want. I want to make a comment. I agree with John Witt about the uh, about what he said to to try to make sure we as a committee. I would suggest can we put a vote and have a vote and ask the DOT specifically to reinstate their representative. And not just discuss it in our com- in our committee right now, but actually see what the committee feels and vote for it, and send it off to the DOT, telling them we would really like that ba- put back on their agenda. I think that's important. I was I I was in those meetings. They were very fruitful. So make the motion. I make the motion that we send a, a formal letter, devoted a formal letter, to go to the DOT to specifically request that they reinstate their their sending a representative to our monthly meetings. Is there, I'll second. Second. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anybody who's opposed? Any abstentions? Passes unanimously. Sid, I have my second comment, and I just want to reiterate what Patrick said. I do agree. I know what you had mentioned the state issue. Maybe the committee could write or insist that our state representative send a letter to us, either either Joanne Simon, and let her know how we feel about tolling. And I think the idea of discussing it in the committee would be appropriate so we could hear everybody's voice. That's, but I'm in favor with that idea. It'll be on the next agenda. A subject, you. It has to, you know, my, the agenda has to be approved by Lenny. I, even though I, I, I have advisory, it is Lenny who does it. Go ahead, Sandy. Um, well, I'd like to talk about, are we, talk, are we talking about tolling the East River Bridges? No. Oh, okay. Um, uh, I want to talk so about- what are we talking about? Because I got, what are we talking about then? Talk, okay. Do you want to talk the toll the BQE? Okay. BQE, all right. All right. So can I, I'm going to talk about Skirmahorn Street. <laughs> so um, we met, the, the bid met with, um, with Keith Ray uh, before before it was implemented, the two-way bike lane and the one-way 
um, traffic. And uh, we asked it for, to reconsider or to redesign it differently so that um, Atlantic Avenue wasn't going to bear the brunt of more traffic, more trucks. And I know other streets are, are uh, impacted as well. Um, and uh, he said he they were just gonna do it and they would monitor it and uh, if, if necessary, make some changes. So that, that there's one coming tonight and that's one tweak. You know, there, there are many problems with this um, Skirmhorn Street one way, uh, two way bike lane that there, there were two bike lane, the bike lanes, two separate ones going in different directions. And, and I believe one reason this, this whole thing happened was because of the permit parkers that were on the north side of Skirmahorn parking half on the sidewalk, half in the bike lane, forcing the bikers to go um, out a little bit far. And I, I just remember the discussion about um, injuries to the bikers, but, not, but yet the, those permit parkers are still parked halfway on the sidewalk and halfway on the road. So there are a lot of, um, I know some people tonight are having issues um, uh, with, with getting uh, transportation if they're disabled or driving out of there. I know that um, uh, I've been going over to look at it. I can tell you the bikers uh, don't stop for the red lights. Um, but Sandy, uh, Sandy, 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 that's a continuing yes, okay, problem. So, okay, that's so, that's so, just so, a Skirmahorn problem. Let, let, let's go back to Skirmahorn. The I know, DOT, but you so know hold what? on, Sandy. DOT made a presentation. This committee voted on Skirmahorn to... No. To, excuse me. We voted on Skirmahorn. I don't think so. Oh, yeah. They presented to us, but they did not ask us to vote. Did we, did we do a vote on... Uh, John, did we do a vote on Skirmahorn? I don't remember, but I, I think Sandy is right. I think it was a presentation. They weren't, it was, they, they were already they implementing it. Okay. They I came, voted no. Yeah. They came to, am I still on here? Yeah, yeah. you're on. We can still okay. hear you. No, they came to us, I remember very well, because after they, um, they gave the presentation and they said they would have signs uh, on Skirmahorn directing trucks to Atlantic Avenue. I remember saying, I'm from Atlantic Avenue and I'm very angry. And we did not vote. They were just presenting it and telling us what they were gonna do. Okay, well, so, 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 what, do you want, so what do you want us to do, well, Sandy? Well, I think the whole thing, look, the South Side where they put the double bike lane, um, there are problems. There were, you, the, the community board had a letter from the hotels and the school along the, <clears throat> along there uh, because of the danger. And also the school is a special uh, needs school and has buses and park in the bike lane. Um, the, um, what do you call it? The um, so, Brooklyn so, Fair. Jenny, excuse me. What, what do you want me point. to say? I want the, you to make your point. That I think it stinks and I think it's chaos. And um, the, the, the um, neighbor who said, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember her name that you ought to come out and look at it. Um, our councilmen ought to, should go out there and look at it and people from the community board because it, it does not so work. Why don't, we, why don't we ask and, DOT, wait, can I let, no, let me finish. Why don't we ask DOT to come back and make a final presentation on what they proposed, all right? And review it and give the community a chance to, to comment. It is a DOT sponsored event you know that the city council member has agreed to it and has, has worked on it. So if you want to ask DOT back, we can do that. But we're not going to rediscuss all of it tonight. Okay. Can I just say, I can, the, everybody's circling around. You, you know, you have parking garages, hotels, deliveries, UPS, mm -hmm can't find parking, they can't block the one moving lane. So they ride around and around. Everybody's riding around and around. Um, 
and everybody's diverted trying to get into the garages if you come from one direction. Um, uh, Sandy, 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 uh, okay, I'm okay, going to stop okay. you now. Stop. stop. I'm Listen, stop. the stop. DOT proposes, the city councilman approved it. If you want them to come back and make a presentation, we can do it. But we're not going to vote to undo it tonight. And Sid, let me just break in to note that we, I looked at the minutes. At the May, me the May meeting, May 19th, 22, it was just a presentation and many of the, and we never took a vote and many of the comments, both committee members and um, uh, public comments were all criticized, were all relevant to many of the points that have been made today by the residents on Skimmerhorn and by others. So just, you know, we, we never took a vote. So let's ask DOT and the city councilman who proposed it to come back to the committee and hear from the public on the issue. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Esther, you have your hand up? The problem is that traffic studies should be done before they put in changes to the streets. The councilman is wrong. He shouldn't approve anything that doesn't have traffic studies that take in consideration people with um, ADA problems, how to get accessory ride in, how to get ambulance moving. Traffic studies need to be done before. DOT now is just running rampant. They come, they present something, and then they do it. No And they lie. If they tell you they did a study, they lie. So, I mean... It's ridiculous. This is what we should be asking DOT for. Prove Thank you, Ms. Cloud. that you Thank did you. a traffic study and how this is going to implement all the other streets around. There you but go. Nobody cares. I mean, so that's what we should be asking. Thank DOT, you, we have asked DOT to come back to our meetings many, many times. They just ignore us. They ignore, I mean, they just don't answer you. So. Thank you. Hey, Thank you, Esther. Brian, do you want to say something? Yeah, this is back from that uh, Bond Street presentation we got in January 2017. They did this modeling for the one block change. They showed us the peak hour traffic volumes before the change. I'm sorry, before the change and after the change. So, I mean, they do that for a single lane reversal. They they do this for every project. You know, I, you know to say that I think it's fine to say that DOT should do studies like this on every project, but let's not assume that they did not do that here because I don't think there's any reason to think that they didn't. I'm going to assume that okay. they did. So we're going to ask them to come. We will put on the agenda and ask them to come back. All right. Can, can I say something, Sid? Yes, quickly. Well, if you want to go back 2004, <laughs> when we had traffic coming, it was said that Skirmahorn should be two ways. And, and I won't go into the details because- So when they come back, make the presentation. Any other business? A community forum. Is there anybody who wants, wishes to speak on a community forum issue? Neil? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Neil. I'm a CB2 resident. I live on a Delphi street right by the Willoughby Open Street, right by PS20. I walked out my door this morning and I saw a number of police cars and police tape, and my heart sank when I saw that an SUV had crashed into the school. I walked that exact stretch of the street no more than an hour before the incident. Last June and the April before, I conducted street counts on that very block, and in the space of two hours, over a thousand people walked along that block. Let me repeat, this morning, a 1.7 ton SUV crashed into a school in our neighborhood. Last year, a three-month-old baby was killed by a reckless driver in our neighborhood. We were told at the time by people on this community board that that was one bad apple. It was one reckless driver. What was today when a driver crashed into the school and abandoned the car? Was that another bad apple? Was that another reckless driver? Or was it the fact that we are not designing our streets for safety? This happened on Willoughby Open Street. 
a street which is meant to be one of our safest, a street that this community board has recommended to the DOT to make less safe. They have recommended to reduce the hours of the street to increase conflict between drivers and between pedestrians. Like, when are we going to realize that the design of our streets is inherently unsafe? How many kids need to die before we do something? We know what the solutions are. The solutions are traffic calming, chicanes, speed bumps. Other cities around the world have solved this problem. We know what the solutions are. Like we call ourselves the greatest city in the world. And yet, like we have multi-ton SUVs driving into our schools. Imagine if it was your kids, your grandkids at that school. How would you feel when you walked out your front door this morning to see an SUV had crashed into the school? Thank God no kids were outside today when the SUV crashed into the school. We are not doing enough. I ask this community board, what are we going to do to protect our children? We can fix this. We just need to fucking try. Hey, Neil, thank you. Brian? Hi, uh, I'm Brian Craigie. I'm a public school history teacher in Brooklyn. And uh, I just want to thank you for watching this little exercise in democracy. And I wanted to bring up one quick question. Um, I live at a uh, building on 211 Shimhorn, and the police cars in the metro station downstairs uh, park there. And it was mentioned already by Sandy. They park their, their uh, cars, not just the city vehicles, but also their personal vehicle. Sorry if you can hear my 18 month old in the back. Uh, <laughs> the, they park their uh, personal vehicles and the city vehicles with their back wheels up onto uh, the sidewalk. And it sometimes is backed up so far um, that the sidewalk gets crunched down to kind of being only one, uh, one uh, uh, block wide of like, I don't know how wide a, a sidewalk block is, but it's only one block wide. I think. And sometimes it's, it's a, uh, Sorry, it's sometimes it's only, uh, sometimes the cars are backed up so far that the exhaust actually blows into our lobby of our building. Um, and it's kind of, we didn't know when we purchased the place here that that was the case, that the police park like that. Um, the whole building is kind of, does really doesn't like it. And I was wondering with the new uh, one way traffic pattern, I've seen other places where they have uh, the, the, Parking spaces are drawn at a diagonal angle so that the police could still park there, but their cars would be at an angle a little bit and they could at least get their back wheels off of the sidewalk. Um, or if there was another type of solution that maybe the, the board here was willing to ask about or potentially discuss or even ask the police uh, parking guys to, or the police to maybe shift how they, they park on the street. Thank well, you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you to talk to Tay about right, having your building write a letter to the commanding officer of the this that's a transit that's a transit unit isn't it i mean that, that is a problem that that has been a problem one of the that one of the reasons why it was changed was because they've been doing this and blocking the the uh, uh for time and memorial so i would ask you to work with tayer about writing them a letter to see if you can get the change and ccdot i mean obviously it's an area that that we're concerned about and i would ask you to ask you to work with dot about it I appreciate it. Could somebody, uh, okay, there's the email address. Thank you. You're welcome. Gloria. Uh, yes, hi, uh, thanks for calling on me. Um, I spoke last night at the general meeting as well. Uh, I'm one of the uh, homeowners of the building on Gates Avenue that's going to abut the pedestrian plaza. Uh, at this point, I'm not sure what else can be done. It looks like it's a, a fait accompli by the DOT. Uh, but I just wanted to reiterate and put on the record the unanimous opposition to this proposal by uh, the residents of the building, all the homeowners. Uh, the people that live on the first floor, um, their bedroom windows face out onto the street. They will have absolutely no privacy in their bedrooms. Um, it's, it's, this, this plan makes no sense. Uh, none of the other pedestrian plazas in the city are so close to, a, you know, to, um, to first floor apartments. Um, 
I'm not sure if anybody from the DOT has even walked down the street to realize that the layout of this plan just doesn't make any sense. There are no stores uh, on this block. Um, you know, it's, it's all residential. Uh, I, I, I hope that there's something that the committee can do. I'm not sure if there is at this point. That's all. Thank you, Gloria. Uh, anybody, anybody else? Mr. Meyer? Yes. If, if I could just have one moment. Um, Ms. Gloria, you have been so persistent and so patient. And if nothing else, I think it's really commendable that you have appeared to every single committee meeting to speak it's, on it's this. It's something that's important to not just me, but- you know, I understand, Ms. Gloria. So in a nutshell, you're correct about one thing. It is out the scope of the committee and the board at this point because it was discussed for a year. But I do want to tell you that there is still an entity that you can appeal to, and that is your local city council member, which I believe for you would be Crystal Hudson. Hudson. And if, if you need any help with that, please reach out to our office because we would be happy to help you. And, and Gloria, I, I, I also appreciate the fact that you've been to the meetings and, you know, we, we, you know, the committee, I mean, the committee has respectfully listened to what you said. And in the end, it, 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 it's what DO, DO, it, in the end, we, we're only advisory. And, and while we, we would try to help you in any way we can, I don't think there's very much else we could do. I think Tay is correct. I think you have to talk to the city council person. We, we, we have worked with uh, Council uh, uh, Hudson's office as well. Um, Mr. Andrew Wright has been uh, very cooperative with us. Um, you know, again, I'm, I'm not... I, I, I'm not yell. I'm I'm not angry with the committee, and I you know I apologize if I've come off that way. Uh, it's just we're we're so frustrated at this point by the um, by the disregard that the DOT has shown us. I, as committee chair, don't feel like you're angry at us. I I really don't. I don't know. You've never expressed it that way. I understand your. Believe me, I've had my frustrations with DOT. Uh, 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 and when DOT and DOT sometimes hears it, I mean, I, 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 I don't like to be an apologist for DOT. I try not to be, uh, but I do try to work with them. John, no, I, I appreciate your time. Thank you. John, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I just want to make this final point that I'm going to make until the Willoughby Avenue open streets, which is actually a closed street, has not gone to an environmental test and is not ADA compliant and we will need to continue to pursue that. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, is there anything further? Is there, is, is, Ramona, are you trying to put up your hand? <laughs> All right, anything further? Either, can I get a motion to dismiss, to uh, adjourn? Yes, yes. Seconded. Hearing no yes. objections. Meetings adjourned. Thank you all tonight. Thank you for the meeting.